Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't been here before, my name is Tracy and this is a DIY upcycling channel where we take unwanted, discarded, thrifted items, breathe new life into them and create one of a kind fun pieces. Now today I want to do a video on one of my favorite things to do and that is create a whole look with just thrifted items, layer them, tweak them, do some simple, simple upcycling sewing and create a one of a kind outfit that if you went to a specialty boutique, you would spend a lot more on than what I did at Goodwill. So I am going to add three pieces here and plus I'll accessorize it and kind of style it at the end with more thrifted stuff. But these are the things we're going to work on. So this is pretty cute, right? On its own. It's a cotton skirt. Eh, it's okay, right? And this kind of blue long sleeve t-shirt. Now this is something I would pass up if I wasn't an upcycler and had a vision for it. And this is pretty cute, pretty basic. It's Kind of a, it's not vintage or anything, kind of a net lace swimsuit cover-up type thing, maybe caftan, but it really doesn't have anything special going on. But I want to combine these three things, tweak them, and create a whole new look. Okay, I'm starting with the skirt, and I want to make a pair of harem pants. Now, this works best if you have a a lot of volume at the bottom and it spreads kind of far. Otherwise, if you have a tight skirt, you kind of get stuck in your pants. You can't take big steps or anything. So if you have a nice long hem at the bottom, you can do whatever you want in them. Okay, I have my skirt inside out and I marked the center with a pin. All I did was fold it over, find where the center is and mark it. And now I'm going to take my good old popcorn pole and mine is 12 inches across this way. And I am going to center it over that pin and bring it up just halfway. And I am going to take a marker or whatever you want to write with. And I am going to trace around that bowl. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. Here's my marker line. And there are two layers of fabric, the front and the back. And I am going to pin those together right on that half circle. I'll stick quite a few pins in there because I don't want that to shift around when I sew. So I'll just stick pins all along this rainbow shape. Now I'm just simply going to take this to my machine and this is 100% cotton with no stretch. So I can use a straight stitch. And I will just sew along that black line two times to make it extra durable. Now, if you have a stretchy skirt, you'll want to do this with a zigzag stitch. Otherwise, your straight stitches will pop when they um, stretch. <laughs> Okay, here's my stitch line. Now I'm just going to cut this half circle out and I'm going to come in about quarter of an inch from that stitch line. And now anytime you have a curve, you need to make little snips before I turn it right side out up to that stitch line, but of course not through it. And that will just help your seam lay nice and smooth. Now I'm just going to turn them right side out. Now I have a pair of hair and pants. Very boho, but also log and look. You know, if you're extra adventurous or maybe you sell your creations, you could do so many fun things with this. You can distress it, make little square holes and patch it from behind, tea stain it, put a big blue bird applique on it, paint splatter, 
all of the above. I definitely have gone pretty nuts on things like this with lots of different techniques. So these are done. Okay, now I'm going to work on this long sleeve t-shirt. And what I want to do is put a big pink velvet heart applique right on the front. Okay, I have this skirt. It's pink crushed velvet. It's way oversized for me. I bought it just for the fabric and that is what I'm going to make the heart out of. Okay, now you have to put your drawing skills to use and make a heart. Mine is 12 inches across and 11 and a half inches tall at the tallest point. And I just did it. I've been doing this since I was a kid. You probably have too. Just taking the piece of paper, folding it in half, drawing half of the heart, and cutting it out. Okay, so I cut out a square out of my pink velvet, big enough for the heart. Now this is kind of stretchy and flimsy, so I am going to back this with medium weight interfacing, it's fusible, and you can find it just about anywhere. I get mine at Walmart or on Amazon, and I am going to back this with this, and I'll show you how I do it. It will just give this more structure, make it easier to work with, and it will actually um, reduce the fraying at the edges as well. Okay, I'm at my ironing board. I have my iron on a really hot setting, and I have the steam on. And then what I did was lay a tea towel down just to protect my ironing board. Then I'm going to take the velvet. Now the velvety side, I'm going to lay down, face down. And then I'm going to take the interfacing. Now this has a smooth side and a bumpy side. The bumpy side are glue dots. I want the glue dots on the back of my velvet. That's what will make it stick to it. And all I will do is take my hot iron and at every spot, I will hold it for 12 seconds. You can use steam. And then when that is done, I will pick this up and move it to another spot. I won't iron it like this. And I will just do that until the whole piece is, ad is adhered to my velvet. Now here's the piece I just ironed. I am just going to put my paper pattern on there and trace around the heart. And now I'm just going to cut it out. Okay, so now I have my shirt laying out on the table and I took an old cutting mat that I have and slipped it in between these two layers so that I can pin this heart on easily. Cardboard works great too. Now I'm just centering the heart on my shirt the best I can. I like it sort of towards the top here by the collar. I don't like it too far down. And then I kind of watch these seams here to make sure that's how I can tell if it's centered pretty good this way. And then I will just pin it on. So my heart has a couple wrinkles from when I did the fusible webbing. I didn't make sure it was smooth enough, I guess, but I think that's a fun detail. And nobody knows that you didn't do that intentionally. I do not sweat things like that. Now I'm just going to sew it on. I will use my largest zigzag stitch, light pink thread, and I will just stay as close to the edge as I can and get it completely sewn. Okay, now the top is done. How cute is that? Okay, now I want to work on the duster. I'm going to call it a duster because that'll be kind of the vibe that it has when I'm all done. And I want to trim it in lace 
including the arms, and do some super simple shearing on the sleeve. Okay, I have this sort of off-white, beigey tablecloth, I think it was. I've already used it on some projects. And I am going to cut long strips going this way, one and a half inches wide. I'm going to use my Pink Power electric scissors. These are awesome if you have like arthritis, carpal tunnel, tendonitis like I do when you do a lot of repetitive cutting or really thick cutting like leather and denim. So I'll put the link to this in my description. And these strips do not have to be perfect and it's almost cuter if they're not. Okay, so now I have a little pile like this. I cut up most of, about three-fourths of that tablecloth that I had. And now I'm just going to sew it to the front on both sides, the bottom and the sleeves of the duster. Now I'll start down at the bottom corner on one side and come up around all the way down around the back at the bottom and then I'll be done with that part. And what I'll do is I'll take a strip and I'll be starting down at the bottom, but I want to bring it in close so you see sort of the pleating that I will be doing. I will have the lace facing the inside here, not over here. And I will just overlap the edge a tiny bit I will use my largest zigzag stitch and I will just pleat this as I go. I'll pleat it quite a bit because I want this pretty roughly. So I'll sew over that and then about an inch down, pleat it about half an inch, sew over that and just keep going around the edge until I get that complete. Then once I have that complete, I will do the sleeves. And I like to start underneath at the seam, and I will do the same thing here. I will overlap it probably about half an inch, whoops, and just pleat it all the way around. And then when I get back to where I started, I'll overlap that about two inches. I won't piece these pieces of lace together or anything like that. Okay, ruffles are done. Look how much just a simple ruffle can elevate this look. It went to just like a whole hum to something that I absolutely love. Now a question I get all the time is won't that cut lace completely unravel in the wash? I've never had it completely unravel. It will fray at the edges some more than others. But that is a look that I love. It makes it soft and, you know, just kind of tattered looking. And you may have to trim some crazy threads after you wash it. But now I want to shear the arms and it's super easy. Okay, so I want my shearing to be, see this line right there, that seam from there all the way down to the ruffle. And so I put it on inside out and I marked with pins starting there all the way down. And that will be my guideline for the elastic that I'm going to use. Now here are my pins. I think I am going to mark mine with Taylor's chalk just because I feel like my pins are gonna fall out and this will be a little more safe. Okay, so now I have some quarter inch elastic left over from the old mask making days. Here's the top of my mark, and here is the bottom of my mark. I And your sleeves have to be fairly wide to get into the sewing machine to do this. And all I will do, I will use a fairly small straight stitch I will stick this in my machine my machine at the top. I'll go forward back on the elastic and then I'll pull 
and sew over top of this elastic. Pull, sew all the way down, and then when it's done, look, it scrunches up like that. Okay, the ruching is all done. It's subtle, but look at the pretty shape that it gives the sleeve. So fun. All right, I'm going to put it all together and let's see what it looks like. Okay, how fun is this? This hat, thrifted, kind of a felt beat up hat. I have some black Doc Martens on, not thrifted, but they could have been thrifted boots. I have a little lace scrap that I just tied in a bow around my neck. Have fun with your clothes. Oh my gosh, go to the thrift store, grab some weird stuff. You know, these hair and pants, I wasn't looking for a skirt and hair and pants. I had this uh, outfit in mind. I was actually looking for like some pink and white striped baggy pants. I couldn't find any. I saw this skirt and thought, oh, I'm going to make hair and pants. All right. Well, I'm going to slow it down a little bit, bring in a little closer so you can see more of the details. And I thank you so, so much for watching.